Good morning, church. Um, I'm going to go straight into the Word of God this morning. And I think that um, I feel like the Lord is leading us into um, a different direction than what I've prepared. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to absolutely change my message this morning. And that's how it looks like to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And when we are led by the Spirit of God, we follow where the Lord is leading. We don't just do what we want to do. We don't just prepare a word and then preach and get it done and go home and have a good lunch. But we do what the Lord calls us to do in obedience. And that's exactly what I want to do this morning. You know, I really feel the anointing. I really feel the anointing for, for healing this morning. And even as Luke was mentioning, just now that the spirit of the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy amen so when a testimony is being released in a house when a testimony is being released in an atmosphere there is an atmosphere of faith that's being curated in this place for a, for the healing for the miracle for the for the for the breakthroughs of the Lord to take place once again in fact the word testimony in the Hebrew word means do it again Church, come on, say, do it again. And every single one of us, there are certain things in our life. I believe there is a certain breakthrough they have been contenting for. There is a prayer they have been contenting for. Whether it's a healing, whether it's a miracle, whether it's your financial situation, there is something that every single one of us is contenting for, even probably for the salvation of your family. Let me tell you something. When you hear the testimony of somebody else, and when you say, Lord, well, I, re I receive what you're doing in that person, life upon my life you are actually releasing the prophecy of the Lord and say God would you do it again God, would you do it again in my life? Just as you did in that person's life. Just as you did in that person in Cebu. Just as you did in the, in the athletes in France. God, would you do it in my life? Because I believe that church, we are called to partner with the Lord. And the Word of God says when you go after Jesus, everything else follows. When you go after Jesus, healing, signs, wonders, miracles, breakthroughs, whatever that you're looking for is found in Him. That is why in the Word it says Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, seek first, seek first, not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth, seek first the kingdom of God and all things, everybody say all things. All things will be added unto you. All things. Whatever that you have been praying for, whatever that you are struggling with, I want you to know for a fact that God knows what you're going through and He is a good Father. He is a good God. He will not leave you in the state that you are. He loves you so much that wherever you are, He will pick you up. That is why the Word of God says He is the lifter of your head. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, Call upon me and I will answer you. That's a promise of the Lord, church. It is a promise of the Lord that when you call upon Jesus, He will surely, everybody say surely, surely, answer you if you are sitting here this morning and say pastor but i but i but i've been calling upon jesus but but i don't feel it i don't see him coming true for me let me tell you something you might not feel or see that he's coming true for you but the fact is in the word of god that when you call upon him he will answer you and the word of god will never fail man may fail, church Situations may fail, deals may fail, promises of men may fail, but God's word will never fail. His promises are yes and amen. And if we hold on to His promises and say, God, if you say it in your word, call upon me and I will answer you, I am sure that when I am in doubt, when I am in despair, when I call upon the name of Jesus, surely, Surely, you will answer my prayer. You will answer my cry. And it doesn't just stop there. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, at the after part, it says, Call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you. You see, that's how the Lord manifests Himself in your life. He will show you great and mighty things which you don't know. What does this mean? He will manifest His goodness upon your life. He will manifest His presence upon your life. 
and that's what it is when you turn to God God will never fail you in fact the word of God says he will never leave you nor forsake you so if you're sitting here in this place needing a healing needing a breakthrough needing a miracle what or whatever that you need I want you to know for one thing for sure that it can only be found in Jesus if you put your trust in Jesus your trust will never rust when you put your trust in Jesus you, He will never fail you that's why Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 says trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not unto your own understanding what does that mean? what does lean not unto your own it means don't depend on your intelligence don't depend on your own knowledge and or your own humanly wisdom don't depend on your own personal experience doesn't mean that it didn't happen in the past it's not going to happen now lean not unto your own understanding in all your ways in every single thing that you do acknowledge Him acknowledge Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life and what He will do for you He shall, He shall, He will direct your path Amen, Amen. He will direct your path it is a promise, I will say a promise you know there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of promises in the Bible for every single one of us to claim but it can be only activated if we put our faith and trust in the Word of God. You see, the Word of God says faith without action is dead. We need to put our faith into action. If you have came here this morning and said, God, I'm looking for an encounter. I'm looking for a breakthrough in my life. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for a healing and you have come with an expectation in your heart and you say Lord today will be the day I re I'm going to receive it let me tell you something as you believe as you believe it shall be done upon your life as you believe it shall be done upon your life that is what faith is faith is not oh seeing then you will believe oh wow that God did that thing for that person God did that thing for a person God can do it for me yeah I receive no you know what faith is faith is believing then seeing when you believe you will start seeing the manifestation of the Lord over your life you will start seeing the goodness of God being manifested over your life you will start seeing your healing taking place you will start seeing your breakthrough taking place you will start seeing miracles coming to pass in your life the thing the very thing you have been asking God for will come to pass if you would just seek Him because it can only be found in Jesus when you go after Jesus everything follows all these things will be added unto you and I, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that every single one of us this morning we have something surely if you don't have please be my mentor I'm pretty sure surely there's something that we are asking of the Lord that we need a breakthrough that we need we're contending for in prayer whether it's the salvation of our family members or whether it's a breakthrough in our finance or whether it's a restoration in our family there is always something but I want you to know that it can only be found in the person of Jesus it can only be found in the person of Jesus and for all those that stand up just now and even as the word of God is being released even from the beginning until now I want you to know that your healing is already taking place even though you don't sense it you don't feel it but I want you to know that your healing is already taking place and I want you to know to just receive and continue to go after Jesus don't go after your healing we are not here to go after the hand of the Lord we are here to go after the heart of the Lord we call go after the heart of the Lord that is why David said in Psalms 27 one thing one thing only one thing can we have it on the screen please Psalms 27 one thing I have desired of the Lord then will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple 
And I, and I really love this verse so much because there is, if you look at the verse, there's nothing about your doing. All, let me put it this way. Relationship with Jesus has got to do more with your being than your doing. Your being is so much more important than your doing. What am I saying? God is more interested in you than what you can offer and do for the kingdom of God. And David, David displayed it so beautifully because he said, and only there's one thing, I'm not here to pray, I'm not here to ask for this, I'm not asking, I'm not asking for anything, God. But I'm only asking for your presence because I just want to be in your house to behold your beauty and to inquire in your temple. And I pray that we as a church, we will be just like David. That's why probably David is called a man after God's own heart. Because he knows how to behold his beauty. He knows that as he comes into prayer, he's not just in a place of petition and need and prayer. He's not just there for that. Because he knows that God already knows what he's going through. He's an all-knowing God. Do you know that? <laughs> if you do not know that, let me tell you that he's an all-knowing God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. Every single thing in your life, past, present, and even future, He already knows. And there are times where we think that God don't know, so we need to blabber out everything that we are going through, our emotion, la, 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 in prayer, and then say, in Jesus' name, amen, and walk out from that presence. But let me tell you something. That is not, that is, there is a place for that, okay? I'm not discounting that. I'm not discounting the, 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 the emotions of prayer whenever you're going through something and you go to God in, in prayer. I'm not discounting that. But what I'm saying is we are called to be ministers unto the Lord. We are called every single day, not just on a weekend, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. That's what we are called for. Not just to worship Him. Okay, sometimes we think that it's only the worshippers that are supposed to come before the Lord with songs and hymns, you know, and their talents and their gifts. But no, every single one of us as believers, we are called to host the presence of Jesus. Can you imagine? Church, I want you to imagine with me this morning. If every single one of us behold His beauty in our secret place, host His presence in our secret place and are aware that wherever we go, we carry the presence of the Lord. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine if every single one of us are so aware and then we walk into this place together? What's going to happen in the atmosphere? The atmosphere will be so charged with the presence of the Lord. The atmosphere will be so charged for an atmosphere of miracle and faith. That's what happens. That is why when we come to church, we are not just here to see what God is saying over my life. Yes, there's a portion to that. But God invites us daily. Everybody say daily. God invites us daily to be in His temple. To be in the tabernacle. To behold His beauty and to inquire in His temple. Every single day, church, I want you to know that there is a fresh invitation for you. There is a fresh invitation for you. The moment that you wake up in the morning, this is what I do. I practice this. I will say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Jesus. And I am ready to hear what you have to say. I am I'm ready to love you. And that is my devotion. I don't talk too much in my devotion because God already knows Okay, there's a time for petition. There's a time for intercession. But in the morning, I just want to be with you. That's what it means that your being is more important than you're doing. You can do a lot of things for the kingdom of God. In fact, I remember sharing this with, with, with a couple of um, our friends that, that sometimes we can be so busy doing the things of God that we forgot God in the process. We can get so busy for God but not busy with God. And this morning, I really sense that even as we are going after healing, we're going after all these things, the moment when you go after Jesus, everything will just follow. Everything will just follow and everything will fall into the right place. I do not know who I'm speaking to this morning. I'm really feeling led by the Holy Spirit, but I felt that 
there are some of you, you feel like everything in your life is not going according to, to your plan. But let me tell you something. It's okay. Because you know why? God is in control. God is in control. Your life is in His hands. If your life is in His hands, your life is in good hands. Come on. Your life is in good hands because He is in control. And all you have to do, church, this is very important. All you have to do is to behold Him. What you need to do every single day, go into your secret place. Go into your secret place. I'm going to follow Pastor Jonathan what he did yesterday. Go into your secret place. And the Word of God says, Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, Right, that's the model that Jesus taught us. He said, when you go into your, when you go into your, can we have it on the screen right now? When you go and pray, this is what you do. Go into your room. Okay, obviously this is a transparent room, okay, you can see me. Go into your room and when you have, shut the door. When you have shut the door, pray. Pray to your Father who is in the secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. Because you know why? There are times where it's only between you and God. You are not praying for somebody to see. Sometimes we pray a lot because we want somebody to see. We're going to pray, uh, you know, all those kind of bombastic prayers because we want to make, we want to pray as if like we are like powerful prayer warriors. But you know what? God is not interested in the way that you pray, in the words that you pray. God is interested in your communion with Him. God is interested in your just being with Him. You know, yesterday I was just telling Joyce, you know, I love you so much. I told Joyce, I love you so much. And <laughs> I mean, come on, I'm pretty sure you tell your husband and you tell your wife that you love them. If you are not doing that, please do. Because if it's been a while since you tell them you love them, please tell them because they need to hear. Even though they know it's important to hear. And I told, this to, I told Joyce, I said, I love you so much. And, and, and I, I, I was just sharing with her, like, there are times where when we go into the presence of God, right, we don't have to even say anything. We don't even have to do anything. There is a time for petition. There is a time for intercession. There is a time of prayer. But there is also a time where you just be still and know that He is God. There is a time where you just stay silent and just enjoy His presence. You know what that looks like? It looks like, for an example, okay, I'm going to give you an example. You know, me and Joyce, we can be in the same room doing our own thing and not be talking to each other. And we just simply love it. Okay, not because we are quarreling, okay, don't get me wrong. We are not quarreling, we are not fighting, we love each other. But there is, we just, we just, we are, doesn't mean that we are not talking means we don't love one, one, one another. I love her, she loves me, but we are doing our own thing. And just by simply being present, we feel the love. We feel the love. And that is what it looks like when it comes to the presence of God. Sometimes you just, you just want to be in His presence and just be aware. Be aware of His presence when you go into your secret place and just enjoy. Enjoy Jesus. Enjoy His love. Enjoy Him being with you at that moment. And that's more than enough. Because that is what love looks like. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure not every single day you got something to pray. Something, I mean, yes, you have something to pray. But every single day with your husband and wife, you don't have everything to talk about. How much thing you can talk in the world? I mean, some of you can really talk. Lah. No doubt. But I'm, what I'm saying is that we don't have to keep talking, 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 talk, 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 blah, 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 blah. But sometimes we, it's just going into the presence of Jesus when you shut your door, go into your secret place and you're just like, ah, I just love your presence, Jesus. I just love being with you. And there is nothing else that I desire more than you. And you just enjoy. And you just soak in the presence of Jesus. And church, if you have never done that before, I encourage you, try. Try. Give it, give it a chance and see what it looks like because I'm, I mean I totally understand that when we go into the presence of the Lord we pray it's important I don't deny I pray every day I pray every day but at the same time I enjoy I enjoy my prayer I enjoy my communion how many of you know that prayer is not meant to be draggy oh, somebody say ouch or amen <laughs> prayer is not meant to be draggy prayer is not meant to tolerate Oh God, I need to pray lah. Because I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. I'm, I need to pray for at least half an hour a day. 
You know, that day I was talking to Luke and he shared something to me and I was like, wow, that's a very beautiful way to say it. Sometimes we say, go and spend time in your room with the Lord for one hour as if we can put a time limit to spend time with your lover. Can you tell your wife, I'm going to spend time only one hour with you today, okay? See you tomorrow. You know, we cannot say that. How are we in love then? When we love somebody, you don't even care about the time. You just love being in that presence. You just love being with that person and just doing things together. And of course, talking and more talking. You know, conversing. But that's what it looks like. When you love Jesus, you just be in His presence. You just commune. Commune with the Father. Can I have John 15 on the screen? He says, Abide in me and I in you. Let me give you the scripture. Yes, yes. Thank you for flowing with me so well. I did not give them any scripture because I totally changed my message. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in a vine, neither can you. Neither can you, church, unless you abide in me. See, John 15, that scripture itself is an invitation. That scripture is an invitation. Would you today, Calvary Community Church, say that you will abide in His presence? Would you say, I will abide in you, Lord? And so that you will abide in me and that we can become one. We can become one and there is a beauty of the union of, the, of, of being one with Jesus. There is a beauty of it. And you can only experience that if you are in that place. Trust me, I can share and preach as much as I, I want, but there are certain things, right, that you, you catch in the presence of the Lord. Some things are caught, but some things are taught. We can preach and teach about the presence and about the encounter of the Lord, but only until you step into the presence, you step into your secret place and experience it for yourself, you will truly get what we are, what we are, what we are saying. And this morning, there is an invitation for you. There's an invitation for you to come. Come. Come into His presence. James chapter 4 verse 8 says, Draw near to me, and I will draw near to you. There is a drawing of the Lord in this place, church. There's a drawing presence of the Lord in this place. And I really, really feel this morning, He's drawing you near. He's drawing you. He's pulling you. In fact, I'm sensing in my spirit there's like a tug. There's like a tug. You know tug of war? There's like a tug, a tugging. God is pulling you because He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And this morning, I don't... I, 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 I don't, want to, I don't want to be speaking too much, but I want, I want all of us to be ministering unto the Lord. And while we minister unto the Lord, if those of you that are still in need of healing or a miracle, continue to be in that posture to receive. As you look to Jesus, as your eyes are gazed upon Jesus, as your mind is upon Jesus, as your heart is upon Jesus, let healing and miracle just flow into your life. Amen, church? Amen, church? Isn't it awesome to be in the presence of the Lord? Man, I just really sense such a beautiful presence of the Lord and I don't want to be speaking too much and that's what I want you to do. I want you to stand to your feet because I'm done for today. I don't want to preach too much but I want, I want all of you to just worship. I want all of you to just host the presence of the Lord. You see, church, every single one of you are called to host the presence of the Lord. Every single one of you are called to be carriers of His glory. And this morning, we're going to ask the Lord, Lord, would you let your presence rest upon me? Let me be a tabernacle of your presence. Let me be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let me be a carrier of your glory, Lord. Can I have the worship team, please? Come on, quick. And we're just going to worship the Lord. And I want you to minister unto the Lord. Rather than your coming to the Lord with your needs and your wants and all the things that you're asking God for in prayer, I want you to look to Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. 
He will do it for you. He will do it for you, church. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to just close your eyes. If you feel like lifting up your hands, just do it. If you feel like kneeling down, just do it. And this is what I want you to do this morning. I want you to build an altar of just worship unto the Lord. Just build an altar of just worship and intimacy with the Lord. Because He is here this morning. And He wants you. He longs for you. He desires you. Church, you are the delight of the Father. You are the delight of God. And this morning, we just want to worship Him. And just give all we are. Come on, worship Him. Because you're all I want. Come on, everybody, just worship Him. You're all I've ever needed. Because you're all I want. I know that you're here. I know that you are near. You're all that we want. You're all I want. You're all I've ever Come on, let this be a prayer this morning. Let this be an invitation from the Lord. Come on, to draw near to Him. Come on. I know that you are near. I know.
It's all about you. It's all about. Come on, let's just sing. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. All about you, Lord. It's all about you. It's all about. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. You sing. I give you my soul. Give you everything. I'll live for you, Lord. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way. Lord, have You know, there's such a sweet presence of the Lord this morning, church. 
I know that we have gone way past time, but we can't put a measure of time when we are in the presence of the Lord. But this is what we're going to do very quickly. If you know that the Lord is touching you, the Lord is asking of you, the Lord is inviting you back into that place of communion with Him once again. Or if you are in need, if you are in need of a fresh touch from the Father, this is what I want you to do. I want you to just leave your seats and just come before the front. And probably in a moment time, we, we're going we're gonna to end the service. But for all those that feel like the Lord is touching you, the Lord is requiring you and inviting you back to the secret place. This is what I want you to do. I want, I want to open an altar right now and I want you to come before the Lord and we're just going to worship a wall, a moment more. And we're just going to love the Lord. And I want, you to, I want the Lord to just speak to you. So right now, if, if you are that person, I would like to open an altar and you can just feel free to come forward and I'm just going to end the service for some of you that needs to really go. But there's such a sweet presence of the Lord that I do not want to, to let you miss this moment. It's your moment between you and the Lord. So if you are that person, I want you to quickly just come forward right now first. Just quickly come forward and just be, just be in that presence. Just allow the Lord to just minister to you and come and say, Lord, I want to renew. I want to renew my, my moment with you. I want to renew my secret place with you, Jesus. Because your presence is so real. And I love you, Jesus. Come on. All across this place, I know there are so much more that the Lord is inviting. I know that there are so much more that the Lord is requiring of you to come forward, to just worship Him and to just commune with Him and be in love with Him and allow Him to love you. Even as you're making your way forward, don't let anything stop you. Don't let fear stop you. Don't let shame stop you. He longs to be with you. He desires you this morning. So I want you to step out and be bold and come forward if you are that person. For the rest of you, this is what I want to go, I'm, I'm going to do. I'm just going to pray and we're going to end the service. And for the rest of you that are standing in the front, let's just continue worship the Lord, okay? Father, I thank you for every single person in the house. We pray, Lord Father, for all those that are in need of healing or a miracle, Lord, you will touch them and that you will heal them. And I pray, Lord Father, that even as they leave from this place, God, Lord, that you will be so real in their secret place. That they will learn how to minister unto you and commune with you, Father. Bless your people. Bless their weak Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say...